Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Dr. Simon's Metabolics and Weight Loss. Uh, ask me anything, Facebook Live event. It's Monday, uh, today's day, the 10th, 9th? 10th. 10th. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. See, so, yeah, kind of lose track. And so, mm -hmm. Yeah, easy so, too. That's right. January the 10th. Yes, it's been weird. It didn't feel like January, you know, just mm -hmm. because of the weather's really not. We did like get that. a little snow. So yeah. that was, yeah, that right. was yeah. a little peak, but yeah. still kind of odd. That's right. So I'm Dr. <laughs> Simons. I'm here with Michelle Kennedy, America's greatest obesity medicine nurse practitioner. He's here today. We're open both yes. locations yes. on Falls of Noose Road in Raleigh and South Point in Durham. We're answering weight loss questions and giving away a $25 gift card, Michelle, yes. because I am somewhat technologically illiterate. <laughs> How do people register to win? So you got to do two things for us. I need you to like this video and then I need you to comment hashtag Simon's AMA in the comment section. Right. So like the video, yeah. hashtag Simon's AMA in the comments. And then you can also ask us live questions. We are here to answer not just questions we've already received, but yeah. things that you come up with during ask, this half hour. You can ask live. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, uh, look, this is, uh, everyone's getting excited about weight loss oh, now. The holidays are over. Mm -hmm trying to repent of their dietary <laughs> sin and get it all right. And uh, it's a good time to be getting your game back together. So, uh, yeah. cause everybody else seems to be doing it. There's a lot more support than there is say during the holidays. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, looks like our first question yeah. is from Wilson in Wake Forest. So Wilson is asking, is diet or exercise more important for weight loss? And we mm. get this question a, a lot. lot, a lot. And I think that there, there's been, a, a paradigm that we've you know followed which is eat less and exercise more and they both absolutely play their role in in health but you will find us telling our patients here that diet is the key because you cannot out exercise Correct. a poor eating yes. plan um, but you can lose weight eating healthy without the exercise component, yes. although it has its benefits, right? right. That's correct. So uh, it, it's definitely true from a modern standpoint. I know in extremes. Okay. Let's say, remember when the, the biggest loser was a television program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I talked to some of their contestants in the past. In fact, I've had a couple patients here who uh, were either contestants or were related to a contestant. And um, I mean, they exercise eight hours a day. So yes, and that, by the way, they control what they eat. But yes. yes, if you could, if you were doing hard labor, eight to 10 hours a day, you maybe wouldn't have to think about what you eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, but come on. It's like a full time job. Right, how many of you are doing exercise. that? Uh, nobody anymore, our ancestors mm -hmm. did this, but uh, you know, modern folks don't do this. So uh, I think the idea that you're gonna out exercise what you eat is a failed notion. It is good for health exercises. Mm -hmm. It's good to shape up your body. It's good for mobility and agility and all these sort of coordination and balance as you get older. All these things are definite health benefits, but using it as a cornerstone and you're saying, I'm going to have this Coke and I'm going to drink it and I'm going to have a piece of cake or whatever tomorrow night. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym the next morning and I'll be able to work that off. I would say, uh, no. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. Work. I, I, I say that as, as the producer was opening a soda, but it was, in diet, fact, a diet, diet. coke, don't worry. which is okay. Yes. Don't worry. Right. Uh, oh, thank you, Lauren, for already yes. entering our giveaway. We appreciate anyone else who's watching. Remember, like this video and comment hashtag Simon's, Simon's AMA. AMA. That's right. All right. All right. Right. So, yes. Wilson, I want to do a, a quick follow-up yes. to what we've talked about already. Weight loss is extremely important for weight maintenance. And this is a very important oh, point. You mean exercise? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes. Okay. Exercise. Yeah. Yeah. exercise. Yeah. Weight loss is important. Yeah, you said weight loss yeah. is important for weight loss. Well, that's true. It is true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the weight loss part of your question, Wilson. So, yes, exercise is a very, very vital tool yeah. in order to keep the right. weight off that you've already lost. That, that is correct. That's, that's a great point. So, yeah, yeah uh, although it's good for health and all mm -hmm. that stuff, it plays a bigger role in weight maintenance. Yes. So that we should emphasize that. So yeah. if you, let's say you lose 70 pounds and you're down to a weight that's acceptable and where you like to be, this is a good time to be doing it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of patients will come and our first visit where we're doing a metabolic assessment and kind of bringing them into the practice and doing support and education and medication. Often we will get the question. So do I have to join yeah. a gym? Right. Do I have to be exercising? And often the case is no. 
right? If you feel up to going for a walk with your family or you can park a little farther at the grocery store, yes. please do that. We're not going to discourage it. But the energy that we want you spending initially is to get some weight off through your diet and then your joints will feel better. Yeah, that's right. Your energy will be better. You'll yeah. want to do more physical movement. That's so right. it is a part of it, but it's more for the maintenance period and it's more for the feel good and the health benefit. Yeah. The eating is where it's at. Yeah, that's where the oh, action is Charlie, at. thank you for yes. entering. We got Charlie. two now. 50 Charlie, 50 shot unless Charlie someone the else golfer. Comes in. That's right. I know, Charlie. All right. Good stuff. Yeah, so Tammy from Durham, right? Yeah, Tammy's asking, does the keto diet require you to count calories, or can I just eat until I'm full? I say any mm -hmm. any eating plan that's not a strict calorie yeah. plan, it is always best to yeah. eat when you're hungry and mm -hmm. stop when you're full. Yes. And oftentimes on a ketogenic diet plan, because the food that you're eating is very nutrient-dense mm -hmm. and often calorie-dense mm -hmm. with fats and proteins, um, we are going to encourage people to really listen to their internal cues and not worry as much about every single calorie. That's right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And the uh, so just just a, another note, um, you know, this idea of stopping when you're full. Okay, it's it's true. If if you eat real food. You don't need to, you know, you don't this need to tell point. people, uh, hey, <laughs> restrict your calories and portion sizes. If I hand you a stick of butter, which is a real food, it comes from a cow, mm -hmm. and I say, here, Michelle, start eating. Mm. I don't have to tell you when to stop. I'm not going to get You're going to figure out yeah. real quick, okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. right, and this is what real food does. It has a way of controlling itself, yeah. right? When you eat real food, you stop at the right time. Have you ever had anybody come in here and say, whoo, I'm addicted to celery. I just can't stop eating. <laughs> no. right? Now, they'll say that about sweets <laughs> and other manufactured foods, right? But in real food, they don't say this, yeah. okay? And so I would just encourage you that when you start eating real food, you'll find it's pretty easy to stop. I would pay attention to one other thing over the years, and this comes from my own personal experience because I've always had to manage my weight. One of the things that really matters is paying attention to satisfaction. So you're going to find out that the sense of fullness catches up with you 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes too slow, you mm -hmm. see. So okay. let's say you're eating, you're you're eating things that are rich in fat, like the butter or whatever. Take a little bit and slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, let that sense catch up to you. If you feel just satisfied, like I can take a couple spoons of pimento cheese when I'm hungry, and within a couple minutes, I'm satisfied. Now I may want more, but then I wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wait another 10, 15 minutes for that feeling of fullness to start to catch up. And often I end up eating less just because of that. So yeah. pay attention yeah. to satisfaction. This is our it's quote, quote of the, of the day. day, right? <laughs> it is an excellent right. point because yeah. a lot of folks through uh, years or decades of eating processed food, they have become accustomed to feeling uncomfortable in order mm -hmm. to feel full. Right. And we're way past that yeah. feeling satisfied. So it does take time to relearn that, just like he was saying, the yeah, satisfaction right. versus the fullness or the discomfort. If you have to unbutton your pants, you're way past Yeah, that's, that's correct. All right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, and if, if this is an issue, you know, whether you uh, are interested in keto or not, we are the place to um, to help you because we work with all kinds of eating plans. We help people learn how to be satisfied. We talk them through the real food versus processed food. Um, so we have medication that can help you as well. So that if you're if you say, but I don't know what it feels like to feel full, right? I eat until I physically feel like it's coming back up. You are not alone. You are mm -hmm. not alone. And there's medication and um, support that can really help in that case. Yeah, that's so correct. don't be afraid to to give us a call. That's right. But generally speaking, no, you don't have to count calories, but they do matter. So just to circle back real quick on the process versus real food, um, a really positive thing that's come out of the keto movement is that a lot of people are familiar with it. They're more accepting of it. But unfortunately, there's also this branch of ketogenic processed food that has really blown up. And in some cases can be useful, but that's typically in moderation. So we have to be careful because even some of the processed keto food, we can easily overeat the way we can overeat processed potato chips and processed pastries. So it, it really all comes back to eating real food and paying attention to the satisfaction. Yes. Yeah. 
That is correct. Yeah. All right, moving on to Courtney. Courtney. Go for it. I grew up during the low fat diet mm -hmm. craze. Oh, me too. <laughs> and was taught that eating fat will make you fat. How much mm -hmm. fat should I be eating for weight loss and fat loss? Mm -hmm. Like this. Mm -hmm. I like this. I like this too. You know, I'm going to be doing a talk. There's an outfit uh, that we have uh, kind of partnered with in the past on several things. Uh, you, you started by Dr. Eric Westman over here at Duke and it's called adapt your life. Mm. Okay. It's about adapting to keto and they have an adapt your life mm -hmm. online Academy and they do these uh, live events. Mm -hmm. And of course during COVID they haven't been doing a lot of events, but they're going to be doing one February the 12th at the McKimmon center over here in Raleigh. And they've asked me to be a speaker. Okay. So give a 30 minute talk and I'm going to, have to come up with a topic and I've been working on my topic. And my topic is going to be this here. How did, how did we end up here as far as this? Where did this sort of fat is bad idea mm. come from? Because you and I know this wasn't historically ever considered to be a credible idea up until recent times and, and historically. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get infuriated about just how uh, personalities and business and government come together to just promote a, a topic that is not true. Yeah. This is the classic example of that. Okay. Eating fat that is naturally occurring fat, right? Has never been something that's bad for human beings. And it was not ever considered by the medical community or the population at large to be a bad thing mm -hmm. ever in any culture up until the forties and fifties when uh, people who uh, really had less than noble intentions began to promote these ideas in the United States. Yes. Right. So uh, I don't ever want you, uh, Courtney, to be concerned that you're eating too much fat or that you're eating saturated fat from animals. This is healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Natural fat isn't bad. It was put on the earth for you to consume it, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to pick on a company that everybody knows. I, I don't know that a parent company about product. The fat in the middle of an Oreo is not a naturally occurring fat. Okay. So I, that's why I, I say naturally occurring fat, yes. right? Big difference. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So the, <laughs> so I'm a big fan of naturally occurring animal fat. I think it's very healthy for you. Yeah. And I think the, the thing that, uh, that we use conceptually to replace that, which was refined carbohydrate was a great historical uh, mistake that has killed many more people and created much more morbidity than any pandemic mm -hmm. in our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it has left a wake of destruction that has created an entire community of just uh, caring for the chronically ill, because that's what happens when you eat like that. Right. And it didn't always, it wasn't always like this. So yeah. No. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about, in my opinion, uh, Yes. Okay. So give me just a second. I'm going to answer uh, one question that we have here, but the, mm -hmm. I don't think you have to worry about counting up the grams of fat. I really yeah. don't. I okay. agree. Yeah. I agree. And, and for a lot of, uh, for a lot of people who come in and they, they don't yet feel comfortable with doing like added fat. I say, well, let's just, let's just move to full fat dairy instead of fat free dairy and full fat salad dressing instead of fat free yeah. salad dressing. Right. So it can be small steps, maybe right. a chicken thigh instead of only chicken breasts, right? We right. don't have to make a huge jump where you're uncomfortable. Um, but it is important to really focus on natural fat, not being the enemy. Um, and we have some blogs about you know, fat being okay on our website, go to simonsmetabolics.com. We have some delicious recipes that can ease you into using fat if you're not yet comfortable cooking in that way on um, the Casual Keto Doctor Instagram. And tomorrow is Tasty Keto Tuesday, so watch out for that email. Um, but there, there are definitely ways, Courtney, to, um, to kind of shift from that low fat thinking that we, we all were in to, to now understanding that we need to eat more like our ancestors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have a question in comments. Did you want to do anything? Yeah. Uh, move on well, to? I would just say that, you know, um, I, I would further go on to say that if you're going to be a scientist and use your intellect and, and, and really be open-minded about these things, right. And rather than steer by commercial interest or commercial, commercial slash government interest mm -hmm. or commercial slash government slash academic interest working, all getting paid and all having some sort of skin in the game. Okay. 
I would, I would keep an open mind about this idea of quote, healthy fat. Mm. I don't like that term. Mm. Okay. Because I do not believe, I do not believe that there's adequate evidence to suggest that nut and seed oils and, and this sort of thing are somehow better than mm -hmm. this naturally occurring animal fat. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that is a mistake. And this stuff is so deeply ingrained in the American consciousness. And I don't think it's right because uh, here's the deal. When we see our patients who switch to a diet of primarily animal fat, what happens to all the parameters of their health? For sure? Everything gets better. It gets better. Right. And this is not universally true of plant oils, for mm -hmm. example. Okay. It's not. So I, I think that, um, you know, I would keep this idea in mind, really keep an open mind about it and be willing to admit that maybe you didn't learn it all. I had to face all this, right? Oh, I did okay. as well. Yeah. As right. Well. So the, uh, it, and it's okay to just come to the conclusion, Hey, maybe, maybe I missed the mark mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I, I need to, it's okay for me to eat. It's okay for me to eat the yolks and the eggs. Not just right. okay. Exactly. That's where so much nutrition right. is. So that's another piece. We, we haven't even touched on the fact that there's things called fat soluble vitamins like yeah. A, D, right. E, and K. That's correct. You can't even absorb if you're not right. eating fat. fat. That's right. That's exactly so right. It's, it, we're, we're malnourishing ourselves by not having the natural fat in our diet. Okay. So we have a question about medications. What oh. kind of medications do we prescribe? So the FDA has approved um, a handful of medications for treating weight. And then there are some that we use off label as well. Uh, the ones that we most commonly prescribe are actually the older medications that have a lot of great yes. safety data. Uh, there is one called Fentramine that is now 63 years of widespread mm -hmm. use on the market. Number one prescribed pill yes. for weight in the United States for 63 straight years. The reigning champion. It, it really is yeah. a tried and true. So there have yeah. been some newer ones that have been approved, some, uh, approved some injectables. A lot of people will be familiar with um, due to some recent publicity. Last summer, one came out. Unfortunately, we're having a lot of supply chain issues yes, that's right. yes. um, that have continued and there is very limited coverage yeah. and out of pocket, they can be thousands of dollars a month yes, these injectables. Right. So the nice thing about uh, drugs like Fentramine or even Topiramate, mm -hmm. which is right. an older medication yes. now used for weight loss, is they are affordable, they are well tolerated, they are extremely effective. And a lot of patients find that having these tools on their journey is very, very helpful. Very yeah. helpful. So yeah, so fentramine is, is a um, it's an anorectic medication that uh, has a stimulant quality to it. It's a longer acting version. There's shorter acting versions also here. Uh, the metformin and the tapiramate are common things that we use. Uh, but as Michelle says, there are other newer things and uh, their use is limited. We prescribe them mm -hmm. if people have the coverage. Very few insurance plans cover the stuff because it's so expensive. And then that, that's separate from the supply chain issues there. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about things like Saxenda or Wegovy uh, or, or, you know, these things, uh, we like them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, for most people, they're not affordable and not available. And so, um, that those are kind of the two things we're battling here. So uh, it, it's unfortunate that it's not like say blood pressure medicine where there's 150 pills on the market mm -hmm. today. Uh, you know, we just have a very few things to pick from here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you're thinking of any of those things we just mentioned and you'd like us to discuss them with you, we'd love to see you in the office and go over that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we're really going to individualize the plan to you. I mean, we, we do have a limited um, arsenal, but we make sure that each individual person um, we talk about what the options are and we've decided yeah. together what makes sense. Not every right. single person takes the exact same regimen. We that, really do tailor it. That's exactly right. Yeah. So Summer, yeah. thanks for entering our Target gift card yeah. giveaway. Thank uh, you. We appreciate that. We've got a few people entering that. That's good. Yep. And um, now we're going to move on to Kendall from Carrie. Yeah. So Kendall um, says she's an emotional eater and she knows what to do, but can't seem to follow it. And can we help? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have so many folks in the practice um, who, who really identify the same exact way, Kendall. The, the emotional eating component is uh, something I think every, uh, every human right, has the potential to struggle with because we have all this processed food and all this stress. And there are literally scientists getting paid lots and lots and lots of money in the back of these big food, you know, labs that are engineering food to be hyper palatable and addictive so that yeah. it hits us in our brain in ways that it's hard mm -hmm. not to use it in a drug like 
way. We That's use correct. it for comfort. Yeah. Um, we use it when we're happy, we use it when we're sad, we use it when we're excited, we use it when we're nervous, and we use it just, just because it's there, right? And we, and we can't not. So um, we definitely can help you. It's not always about the knowing what to do. Sometimes it's having the tools and the support mm -hmm to do it yeah. and that's really where we come in for a lot of folks a lot a lot of folks they know what to do and they know what maybe has worked in the past they just can't stick with it and that's where coming to a practice like ours and letting us help you makes all the difference and there are even some medications like we were just talking yeah. about that touch on the centers in our brain where the cravings versus the hunger comes from and where the emotional eating is driven from. that's correct yes and so the medication does in fact help and then, and then look, I always say psychotherapy as you go and you explain to somebody who's a therapist uh, what your problem is. And then they guide you through a conversation where you have to suggest a solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you try the solution for a couple of weeks. You go back and see it. Is yep. it working? Is it not working? Yep. And eventually you arrive at the place where you've come up with ways to deal with the emotional eating in this case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to pay the psychotherapist to do this we can give you medication. You can start having this conversation with yourself on your own. If you can recognize that you're an emotional leader, you're halfway there. Yeah. Okay. The other half is just coming up with different strategies to try to overcome that. Absolutely. So, um, Thank you for that question, Kendall. We have a question in comments. It looks like Jeanette is asking how to curb late night snacking. Oh, this is, this is one that we, that we definitely talk a lot about in the practice. Um, my, my strategies are medication. Yes. Uh, and planning, yep. right? Um, and sometimes distraction. So making yep. sure that there's something else to occupy your your time. How That's it. You? I totally agree with that, 100%. It's almost always in the same scenarios that you do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you understand those scenarios and surroundings, you can start to change those things. Yes. And um, and I always say, if I and by the way, you can do it because if I was an inordinately wealthy man and said, I'm going to give you a million dollars a day for every day that you don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guess what? You figure out real quick mm -hmm. how to not do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's definitely something you can overcome. Yeah. And, uh, and our medication helps, you know, a, a, a late afternoon dose of medicine. We've got a couple here that we could give you mm -hmm. that would help control that sort of thing in the evening mm -hmm. to pyramate being one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that sort of thing. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It works great for yeah. so many folks. And from a dietary pers perspective, um, don't underestimate the power of what you eat early in the day, influencing what you eat later in the yeah, day. I think sure. a, lot, a lot of people forget that how they start their day, when they break their fast breakfast, doesn't matter the time, eating 30 or more grams of protein, which you will hear mm -hmm. us talk about over and over if you're, if you're a patient or practice, is crucial, crucial to what you're going to be compelled to do later in the day. Yeah. Okay, It's not the end all be all, but it is a big component. So if you are starting your day with a, a bite of a muffin in the break room and then kind of moving on, that is not a great way to set the stage for good blood sugar control and craving control later in the evening. So those I, are the type of things I we're talking about. agree with that. As well, if you were here. Um, sorry so if you're a muffin. muffin. We're picking on Um, Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even the flax ones are exactly. not good for you. Oh, so not. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Esther from Raleigh. I struggle with finding the time or having enough energy to exercise. What can I do? We partially answered this. So the first question. Yeah, right? a little bit. I mean, if you're trying to lose weight, we, we don't put this huge emphasis on exercise as a weight loss tool. So there you go. Put yeah. the emphasis on your diet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, the, the other thing I would say is that, look, um, there's there's formal exercise and this takes time. But then there's what's called uh, called NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That is movement. Mm -hmm. OK. And this accounts for a lot of weight loss. Yeah. So your comment about parking farther away, taking the stairs, uh, getting up out of your chair several times a day, uh, these things add up. And More you than you right. think. And you don't have to have change in the exercise clothes to do them. You don't have to block a period of time out of your day, yep. go to a gym, drive there, drive back, shower, all that stuff. You can just do it of your normal day. All those things matter. So I would encourage you just to find ways to fidget more and move more. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And, and my patients will often um, hear me use the term sprinkle it in. I, yeah. I often say if you really want to start a squat regimen or mm -hmm. a push-up regimen or you want you know to use bands but you feel like you can't carve out some time, I say, okay, well, while you brush your teeth in the morning, do three squats. Every time you go use the restroom, do three more. Yeah, right? So right. it doesn't have to be this big block of time. That's correct. It can be this little bit, right? If you're watching TV at night, maybe during every commercial, if you're watching commercials, everything's streaming now, but if there's an ad that comes on, you can't skip it, 
get up and just walk to get a drink of water and walk back down, right? Yes. So every little thing really does. Now that is a really good point. Our ancestors didn't join a YMCA, I always say. Okay, they were active people. Mm -hmm. And so I think your DNA is adapted to this idea of this activity kind of intermittently or throughout the day, mm -hmm. just as a as kind of a constant way of, of life, you see. You know, they had to get up and walk everywhere. Uh, there wasn't a lot of, uh, they weren't driving and all this sort. So there's this kind of low intensity activity that, that was sprinkled all the way throughout the day, like yeah. you say. And I think this really works with the human DNA. Yeah. And so uh, I, I actually created a little mnemonic for it years ago, but your concept is right. I mean, the fastest I ever lost weight was when I would uh, do, do push-ups uh, for the number of patients seen. Maybe just five push-ups per patient, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you know, I mean, all it takes to see somewhere between 20 and 40 patients and you spurt, you've interspersed a lot of push-ups throughout the day. How long does it take to do five push-ups? Yeah, not, Not long, right? The patient can walk out of the office, I can drop, do five, <laughs> boom. Up next to the per This you is know, a good image. I, yeah, I remember one time I lost 60 pounds in 60 days doing that. And, but it kind of, it's that concept. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, I think that's kind of something that I, I wanted to develop that idea over the years. Cause so many people feel like they have to join the gym, go to classes, do this. And it be it's very, very, um, you know, constraining. It is. It is. So the producer is saying we should do that again as a 2022 yeah. challenge. So <laughs> yeah. Push ups yeah. per patient scene. I, I might do it. I've got a little bit of a shoulder issue. And so oh. I hadn't, I didn't, laying off all that stuff. I'm not quite sure how I hurt my shoulder. I don't want to go see the orthopedist because they'll tell me, hey, mm. let's cut your shoulder. Right, <laughs> right. That's a good point. It's, it's some of these things but I could do sit-ups. Right. Yeah. yeah, so you could do yeah. your I like the idea of the squats. Mm -hmm. It's a big squats muscle group, right? Your legs yeah. are a big muscle group. You burn a lot of calories doing yes. legs. You don't even have to do weight. You can just do what they call the prison squat because of that weight, mm -hmm. right? Air squat. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. And even if getting on the floor is not something you want to do, you could do push-ups against a wall. Yeah. You can do push-ups against a desk or a counter. So it's, it's these little modifications that make a, a big difference. Um, and and I, I will say, uh, the producer said 22 squats yeah. per patient. Yeah, it's a lot that's of squats. That's a lot of squats. So you're not going to be able to sit down. Uh, but I will say that it, yeah. is, it is very, After very one good. Wednesday, I won't be able to walk. <laughs> My butt will be so sore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waddling down the hallway. Uh, but we, uh, we do have to often help people kind of unlearn the concept, especially if they were maybe athletes in their teens or 20s. Yes. That exercise does not mean you have to be unable to breathe, unable to talk, right. and sweating for a few seconds. That's right, yeah. Right? It, this this right. stuff does count, even if it is, is a little extra movement than you would normally do. Okay, let's get this last one. Cassidy yeah. from Durham, is there any truth that the keto diet can cause hair loss? No. Any diet can cause hair loss, okay, but not the keto diet specifically. Mm -hmm. It's not the, the rapid weight loss is, does produce hair loss, uh, no matter what method you use to do it, and it will correct itself. Yeah, and yeah. that is that is a really important thing to keep in mind. That um, we get that question about medications too, so I'll throw right. that in. Like, did, does this medication cause me to lose my hair? And um, very, very rarely, if, yeah. if not never, it is the weight loss that is yeah. happening and the calorie restriction that is happening. And it can take six months or more for those hair growth cycles to come back. Yeah. Um, any woman probably who has been pregnant understands that whole idea of having great hair, losing hair, hair coming back, right? It right. does take time. It yep. does take time. Okay. That's exactly right. So we've got a winner. We got a winner. We awesome. have summer. summer. Yay! Summer, you're the winner. Thank you so much for everyone who entered our giveaway for Target gift card summer. We will contact you um, so that we can get that to you. Everyone, please join next time because we will give away another one. So thanks for watching. All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We're open in Raleigh and Durham today. Find us on SimonsMetabolics.com. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you in a couple weeks.